if your goal is just to build some muscle, gain some strength, a very minimalist routine. I mean, training an hour a week, let's say two days, two half hour sessions a week can give you very nice, most people, very nice results, provided you're training hard. Is that gonna, if you're looking to be a bodybuilder, is that gonna, or you're gonna step on stage? No, I, I would say with 100% confidence that is not gonna be sufficient to optimize your gain. So volume has been shown to be a driver of hypertrophy. Again, we've done uh, original research on this. We've done um, made an app, made analytic work. And uh, there is a dose response relationship up to a certain point. It is individual specific as well. So some people respond better to, or re respond well to uh, lower volumes. Some people need more volume to maximize their results. Um, hard to study individual, resp individual responses, but these are kind of general um, insights that we glean from the literature. But I would say, as a general guideline to optimize hypertrophy, you want to be somewhere between 10 to 20 sets per muscle per week. Now that's not going to be able to be done doing two half hour sessions per week. But um, we recently published a review paper called No Time to Lift. It's open access. So you can maybe post on, on the, this uh, podcast the link to that or, or show the uh, image of the study. But uh, we basically kind of looked at what is your minimal effective dose? Uh, and that was roughly around four sets uh, per week, uh, per muscle per week, which again can be done two, th maximum, th you know, three half hour sessions, two to three half hour sessions per week. Uh, you can get very nice results. Um, and I think get probably, for most people, the majority of gains in that period of time. And then if you want more, you're going to have to devote more time. Are there certain um, strategies that can be, so we were talking about like powerlifting, are there certain things that can be done to, you know, be able to not have to have as much time as well? I mean, certain types of exercises. Yeah, so a couple of things, number one or several. Um, first of all, training with lighter loads, while again, it's a very viable option, it does extend the time of the workout. So if you're training, let's say with 30 reps, the set's gonna take triple the amount of time if you're training with 10 reps. So that, if you're very time pressed, can be a consideration. Now, how much that, depending upon how many sets you're doing, if you're doing minimal, minimalistic training, it's probably not adding that much time on. If you're doing a lot of volume, it can be more extensive. But using multi-joint exercises, so again, multi-joint is more than one joint. Presses, rows, squats, deadlifts, push-ups, chin-ups. Uh, these are exercises that involve multiple muscle groups uh, and a lot of stabilizer muscles. They're much more time efficient than doing, let's say, a bicep curl. So when you're doing, let's say, a lat pull down or a chin up, uh, you're working your biceps very effectively. You're, you're performing elbow flexion in addition to working your lats, the sternal portion of your pecs even, or working in many of the stabilizer muscle groups. Uh, squats involve many muscle groups, so really the total lower body, and even stabilizers in your torso. Um, so I would say focus more on your multi-joint exercise. And then you can use various time-efficient strategies. So kind of these advanced training methods such as a superset, which is doing two different exercises. Um, and there's different ways to structure these. There's something called a pair set, paired set, where you do agonist-antagonist movements, such as, so the biceps and triceps are agonist-antagonist muscles, meaning that when one is contracting, one is shortening, the other is lengthening, per se. Um, so if you do a biceps curl, you can immediately do a triceps press down after that, and really you're working the muscles in different fashion. You don't have to rest between the sets. Um, you could do a leg exercise followed by an up, so lower body followed by an upper body exercise. Again, you're working different muscle groups, so you get, it's more time efficient, you don't have to take the rest. If you're gonna do, let's say, sets of chest press, so let's say I do the typical, traditional way of doing sets is, you do a set, then you rest, then you do a, another set for the same muscle group, you rest. Um, that's gonna take more time, because you're gonna have to rest between those sets. Uh, there is something called drop sets, where you can do a set to failure, or certainly close to failure, then you uh, drop the weight, when, I don't mean drop literally, but you reduce the amount of load. 
Um, so let's say, uh, for instance, let's say you're using, you have a rack of dumbbells and you use 20 pound dumbbells for curls. You can then, when you finish, you're get, getting really difficult on those last reps. You then go to the 15 pound dumbbells and you do more reps because you're lightening the load, you're able to do more weights. You can do triple drops. So you go from 20 to 15 to 10 to five even and just do them without any rest and then not do any more sets. So rather than doing multiple sets, you just do this one drop set, long drop set. Now, is that as effective as doing multiple sets of the same muscle? We don't have enough evidence to show, but I, I do think we have enough where I would confidently say for the gen pop, it, it will be just or close to as effective. I don't think for the majority of the populations it will make much difference. Again, for the high level athlete bodybuilder, it might. Uh, and that's where, again, context is important. Where this idea of resting, um, this is great information because um, typically the way I work out, which is far from bodybuilder <laughs> level, mm -hmm. um, I don't rest in between sets, but I'm also, I immediately switch to the next thing. And then I'll eventually go back to that first uh, muscle group I was working. Um, so I'll like, I'll have, you know, like, three different muscle groups and all and I'm doing the lighter and, and, and faster and then so if if you are um, doing a set like why is it important to to rest in between the set is it like something to do with like muscle protein synthesis or what well I, I mean if you're gonna let's say you, you're gonna do four sets of chest presses you have to rest because if you if you're training really hard at that last rep you pick up the weight let's say in two seconds you're not going to be able to do it by default, if you're training very hard, you're not going to be able to do any more reps or else you're, then you're at failure. So you have to have some degree of rest. Now, if you're resting very short periods, let's say you, you're resting 30 seconds, uh, you're, the amount of load that you're going to be able to do will be much less or the amount of reps at the same load. And, and this is actually interesting. So it had always been promoted. This is another area where I've shifted my thought processes. Um, but it had been promoted that resting shorter was better for muscle hypertrophy. So what I've been taught when I was an up-and-coming strength and conditioning professional that if you want strength, you uh, take long rest, like three minutes in between your sets. And for hypertrophy, it's like 30 seconds to a minute because that will maximize the hormonal response. So in between um, sets, or, or depending on the type of training that you... Uh, are doing shorter rest intervals will promote interset rest intervals will promote greater growth hormone testosterone and IGF-1 responses after the workout is over. The literature, and that used to be thought to be a main driver of hypertrophy, the compelling body of literature now shows that it probably doesn't have, if it does have an effect, it would be very modest and it might not even have any effect at all. So certainly it would not be something that I consider would be important to take into account. And the issue is, is that volume load, the amount of total amount of weight that you lift in a given session, which is the amount of work that you're doing, does seem to be a factor. So let's say I'm doing a set of squats with 200 pounds for 10 reps, and then I rest 30 seconds between, uh, I'll try to do another one after 30 seconds. Let's say I try to use that same 200 pounds, I'm not getting anywhere near 10 reps. And based on the literature that we have, I'm probably only getting five reps. Whereas if I would rest two minutes, I'd be able to get much closer to that 10 reps. And if I rested three, even more. And that's why it's actually been shown that resting short, having short rest periods between sets if you're doing a certain number of sets and you're resting short, uh, taking short rest, it actually compromises hypertrophy. So it actually has a negative effect, giving greater credence to the fact that at the very least, the volume load is more important than any hormonal effects that are given.